It's that time again when thousands of youngsters across the island are in high preparation for the Grade 6 Achievement Test, GSAT. Last year this time, young Jonathan Morgan, while at Hazana Preparatory in St. James, was putting in last-minute work in order to be ready. Well, it paid off. He scored 100% in all five papers. For me, it was really rough. It was took a lot of hard work and I'm a person who likes to relax a lot. So, for someone who likes to chill out, what strategies did Jonathan use to come out on top? Studying for me was about finding the right studying method. So what I would normally do is, when I, when I come home from school, just read over my notes a couple of times. Uh, I would most times read it aloud because I'm primarily an auditory learner. So I would read it aloud first, then explain it to myself mentally and then explain it out loud and that would help a lot. As an auditory learner or one who learns best by listening, that was Jonathan's approach to studying at home. What strategies did he use in the classroom? So as an auditory learner, one of the main things that I had to do was pay attention in class because I could just pay attention in class and, and was able to do well on a test that we had. I didn't really, reading, I'm not a person who likes to read. If uh, I prefer someone reading to me. We caught up with another top GSAT performer for 2016, Jessica Sims, a former student of St. Richard's Primary. She found out that her learning style was mostly kinesthetic. That is, she learned best while carrying out physical activities. I learn faster while moving around. So sometimes I sketch and I learn faster by, by, by doing that. The most important thing to do is use a highlighter when studying to highlight keywords in uh, your studies or book. I also uh, made side notes uh, like to summarize everything. Sometimes I twirl my hair and like, I'm more engrossed in my studies when I do that. And I also made a schedule per week. If you'd like to know your learning style and the corresponding study tips, check out websites such as learning-styles-online.com. Now, once you've identified which studying style suits you, it is important to practice constantly, especially for subjects like math. Math wasn't really a problem for me, but some topics, like especially fractions, I've had problems with fractions ever since I was um, ever since I was in grade one, fractions have been giving me problems, but I, uh, I had to keep on practicing it and practicing it and practicing it until I got it right. And also, one of the problems that I had is that I didn't know my timetables, and it was hard for me to learn my timetables. The method that worked for me is that I had to keep on saying it over and over again until the sound got stuck in my head. and that helped me with everything. Everything just fell in place once I knew my timetables. I got familiar with the math principles for like profit and loss. Also like I studied very hard and practiced the principles. But as everything else in life, balance is important. When I came home from school, I took about an hour just to relax. An hour just to relax. After that, I would start my homework and uh, probably take a break after, uh, when I'm finished with my homework, take a break to eat, and then relax again. I do, after that, I would probably study, but I don't like to study for more than two hours. That I, so yes, I, w I wouldn't recommend studying for longer periods than that without taking a break, and I always try and get about seven to eight hours of sleep. While teachers have an important role to play in getting youngsters prepared for the exams, parents are also integral. They need to supervise their children as closely as possible and work along with them and keep in touch with the teacher. The teacher-parent relationship is very good, so they have to keep in touch with the teacher as well. My parents are very supportive. My parents, I'm, I consider myself a very lazy person, so my parents were always there to get me back into line and say, okay, Jonathan, yes, you have to do this. And uh, they were always there in case I didn't understand the topic. They would always try their best to try uh, ex to explain it to me. And they would always tell me that I, only my best is good enough. 
and they would say, say that I can always, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. On the night before the exam, what should you as a GSET student be doing? Believe it or not, experts say that's not the time to be studying. The night before exam, I would advise them to just relax, watch movie or something like that, play their favorite game, just relax. Right now you're just preparing mentally. You need to be as calm as you can. Uh, just always remember that, just do your best. Only your best is, is good enough. On the day of the exam, here are some helpful tips. Check over, recheck, check again. That's when you're going, going to see the mistakes that you made. That's when you're going to think twice about the answer that you put down. Time management is very important. And also the proper nutrition is also important. I would advise parents do not give them things like soda to drink. To drink. It is not healthy. I stayed calm. I would breathe that deeply. So there you have it. You can master GSAT. It's just a healthy mix of applying the study style that suits you best, practice, balance work with play, and on exam day, check your work carefully. But the most important takeaway is to remain calm. Just give it your best. Mm -hmm.